Audio and MIDI are the foundational pillars of modern music production. Audio is the more obvious of the two, after all, music is audio, and before the 1980s, MIDI didn't even exist. Despite being crucial to modern music production, MIDI can be a tricky topic to grasp. My goal in this video is to present MIDI in terms that can be easily understood by the amateur musician. I won't be diving deep into ultra-technical discussion of MIDI messages or reviewing the history of digital music making. This is a beginner's guide to understanding MIDI. MIDI is an acronym that stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Okay, great, but why is this useful information? Well, let's break it down even further. A musical instrument is a device designed or adapted for musical application. Sweet. An interface is something that enables us to communicate with a computer. And digital is a system of transmitting and recording information using binary, the language of computers. Therefore, I'm going to define MIDI as a digital language that a computer translates to musical information. Let's see how this works in action. Here I have a device that triggers and sends MIDI data, a MIDI controller, which plugs into a computer, most commonly via USB. Historically, MIDI has been sent to a computer or other MIDI-equipped hardware via a designated MIDI interface. This device provides MIDI in and out via standard 5-pin MIDI jacks. While MIDI interfaces are still widely used, most newer models of MIDI keyboards opt for a straight-to-USB connection. That being said, these newer models do have MIDI interfaces, they are just built into the device itself. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to stick with a straight-to-USB MIDI controller for my explanations. Your computer will need to be running music software that has been programmed to record and playback MIDI, such as GarageBand, Pro Tools, Logic Pro, and a bunch of others. Although modeled after a piano keyboard, this electronic device does not produce audio. Instead, whenever you press a key on this keyboard, it sends a stream of binary data to your computer. Components of this digital data stream correspond to various parameters, such as which key was pressed and how fast that key was pressed. It is then up to the computer, via the music software, to analyze this information and generate audio data based on what MIDI data it receives. The audio data, which is generated by your virtual instrument, is sent to your audio interface. It is the job of the audio interface to convert this stream of zeros and ones into an analog electrical signal. Let's be clear that the stream of zeros and ones sent to the audio interface is audio data, which was generated by your virtual instrument. MIDI data is not sent to your audio interface. This signal is then sent to your studio monitors, which produce the final audio. The sound that ultimately comes out of your speakers depends on your settings in your music software. Most importantly, which virtual instrument you have selected. Here in Logic, I'm going to select a piano virtual instrument, and then press middle C on my MIDI controller. Now, I'm going to select an oboe, and play the exact same note at the exact same velocity. The MIDI controller sent the exact same MIDI data to the computer for both of these notes, but since I changed instruments within my music software, the sound that came through the speakers switched from piano to oboe. Because you are rewarded with immediate auditory feedback when you press a key on your MIDI controller, it gives off the illusion that your controller is producing audio, but this is not the case. This is a core concept that bears repeating. MIDI is not audio. MIDI is simply the instructions for your computer to produce audio. This act of translating abstract information into audio should be familiar to any musician. It's very similar to the process of reading sheet music. Let's say you have an idea for a melody and you want it to be played by a cello. So you hire a cellist to play it you need some way to communicate the instructions on how to play your melody. Music notation, or sheet music, is your answer. Music notation is a standardized, abstract language that serves as musical instructions. 
These symbols essentially serve as the musician's alphabet. This means play this note. This means play it this loud. And this means hold it this long. Using this abstract language, you can write down the instructions on how to play your melody. Now here's the core concept. This sheet of written music is not audio. These are simply instructions. It requires the expertise of somebody who speaks the language to translate it from abstract symbols on a page into sound waves. It doesn't become audio until it has been translated and performed. In the same way, your MIDI data is not audio. It is an abstract language that serves as instructions. It requires the computer's expertise to translate the stream of zeros and ones into musical information. These are just instructions. Okay, so it's not technically audio, but the whole process of pressing a key and getting sound from the speakers happens so quickly. For all intents and purposes, can't we treat MIDI and audio the same? Well, no. You can run into some issues if you treat recorded MIDI the same as recorded audio. For example, let's say you've recorded a song that uses some MIDI instruments. You're playing it through your speakers and it's sounding great. You now want to take your session to a friend's house so he can listen to it and give some feedback. You save your session, copy it to a hard drive, and take it over to his place. He opens it on his computer and hits play. The audio tracks are sounding great, but none of your MIDI tracks are playing. Turns out, your friend doesn't own the virtual instruments that you had assigned to those MIDI tracks. This would be the equivalent of writing some sheet music for saxophone, taking it to your friend's house so that he can play it for you, and then realizing he doesn't own a saxophone. Even though you have the sheet music, it doesn't matter. Those are just instructions. If you want to hear it, you'll need a saxophone player who can translate your sheet music into audio. To solve this issue, you need to convert your MIDI data into audio data within your music software. This essentially tells the computer to record the MIDI playback internally, thus creating an audio track. It's a good idea to always do this when you've finalized your MIDI tracks. Since audio files can be played on any computer, regardless of software, it ensures that your tracks will be compatible with other machines. Because MIDI is essentially digital sheet music, it allows for a great level of flexibility when producing music. Let's say you've recorded a melody using a cello virtual instrument. You like the melody, but you're curious as to how it would sound if performed on piano. Well, you can simply grab the MIDI information and drag it to a piano virtual instrument, and it will play back your melody on piano. This is the equivalent of grabbing the sheet music from the cellist music stand and giving it to the piano player instead. If you want both instruments to play it, you can simply copy it and give it to both of them. Maybe you want the cello to play the first four notes and the piano to play the last three notes. In this way, MIDI is dynamic, interactive sheet music that responds to your edits in real time. One of the most common problems students have when recording MIDI for the first time is the issue of latency. Latency is a noticeable delay between pressing a key and hearing the sound from the speakers. Latency affects audio recording as well. When you speak into the microphone, there will be a noticeable delay before you hear yourself through the speakers. When you're trying to record, latency can completely ruin your rhythm. Fortunately, this common issue has a simple solution. Adjusting your buffer size. The buffer kind of works like this. As audio data prepares to be sent from your computer to the output, it is placed in a queue, or a holding bin. And when it reaches the top of the queue, it is sent through to the output. This holding bin is called the buffer. 
The purpose of this is to give your computer some extra time to process other tasks simultaneously. Your computer is managing a bunch of tasks every second, putting graphics on the screen, processing audio plugins, monitoring storage, all that stuff. The buffer alleviates your computer by giving it some extra time to send your data to the speakers. It's the size of the buffer that affects the delay in your recordings. Think of your data as a stream of water heading towards your speakers. It is first sent to the buffer, and then once it fills up, the water can flow through to your output. Simple enough. But what if we increase the size of the buffer? Well, if we do that, it will take the water much longer to fill to the top where it can then flow to the output. Here lies the main concept regarding the buffer. The larger the buffer size, the greater the latency. The smaller the buffer size, the shorter the latency. Be aware that if you use a smaller buffer size, it will require more processing power from your computer. If you have lots of audio plugins, reverbs, delays, compressors, and equalizers, in your session, your computer might not be able to keep up with everything. It's a good rule of thumb to use a small buffer size when you're recording MIDI or audio, but when you're editing or mixing, switch to a larger buffer size. MIDI is a powerful, versatile tool in music production. Understanding how it works will help you record, produce, and edit more efficiently. This has been a beginner's guide to understanding MIDI.